what's up y'all today we've got a lock and ox gate lock now, these are pretty common here in the u.s they actually use a profile cylinder uh and they do have all metric fasteners so at this exact moment i do carry my standard eklund 20912 on my side however it's standard not metric and uh, I don't carry the metric around because you don't use it a whole lot. But I also have these Husky T-wrenches. These things come in handy every so often because it gives you greater leverage. So uh, this one is a six millimeter and I want to say a three millimeter or four millimeter. So I'm going to grab this because the big bolts sometimes are hard to break free from the gate. Uh, and we have to replace the cylinder because we do not have a key for it. And uh, right now I'm, I'm digging through my Klein bag right here for that and then I need to dig through another bag for uh, my metric fold-up set if I can oh here's the other bag here's the other bag this is such an awkward way to do this I found it uh, but the one good thing about the Eklund metric 21171 set is it does have a six millimeter so we can actually use this for the whole job if those bolts aren't too tight and what did i do with the what did i do with the uh the t-wrench there it is all right let's go take this guy off so here is our lock and ox gate lock uh these are actually pretty decent locks i'm not going to say much about the electronic version of these but the actual mechanical gate locks is pretty decent because you do only have to drill like four holes in the edge to mount it. Uh, and then of course your strike plate part. Uh, so let's first off, let's just see. That looks like it's a little stripped. See how it's, yeah, we're gonna have to, we have to crank this guy down. Okay, there we go. I'm doing this left-handed. Oh, okay, hold on. Switch to my other hand here. Uh oh. Okay, hold up. Okay, this bottom one ended up being a two-hander, and that's typically the case because the bottom catches the most rust, uh, especially on the old ones. We can see how rusty that bolt is. Uh, and I don't have a camera stand here, so bear with me. Get this the rest of the way off. There's no real way to do it. We can see the corrosion on the threads. I could go ahead and spray it right now, but we're almost off. We're almost off. Okay, break that free. And let's come up here. I think we should be good on that. Uh, and now I gotta support the weight of it because it's it's literally gonna just come off now. That. Let's see if we can get this bolt the rest of the way out. It's a good idea to uh, to heavily lubricate these guys every so often if you're a lock and lock homeowner to keep this from getting bad. Just like that. They are stainless steel bolts, so that's. That's a good thing. All right, now I'm gonna support the weight and unscrew this one. Okay, now this one came out with this uh, shield. I don't know if the shield's still in this other hole or not, but once we get those two off, all right, we can lift it out. Oh, I did do this. Okay. <coughs> May have to pull the handle off. That's where the other side uh, Allen wrench comes in. Now, Nope, we got it. We got it. We didn't have to do that. All right, so that's pretty easy. We're just going to leave these right here because we're going to bring the lube. Not, we're not going to bring the lube back with us. That's just one more thing we got to carry. All right, let's go uh, take the cylinder out. Okay, there we go. I'm going to kind of keep an eye on my camera there because it's been freezing up. Now, these are standard 
profile cylinders, except they're pretty short. That's two and an eighth inch long or 54 millimeter according to the website. And because they're screw caps or uh, painted in caps like this, uh, you know, they're, they are clip. We could take the clip out and follow it out just like a regular profile cylinder would be. However, uh, these, if you decide to keep them in stock, they're not terribly expensive. So we just, to save time on site, we just switch it. However, yes, it does have to be picked. However, however, you notice it's only four pins. So kind of good and bad. Uh, I would prefer it to not have to be picked because it is a kind of a Yale parasitic, paracentric type keyway like a Y1 but four pin and, and it's actually got pretty radical bidding on this one. So uh, let's just give it a try raking it a few times. Uh, and we just have to take, there's the, there's the cylinder screw right there. Oop. Now we only needed that other Allen wrench if we took, needed to tighten the handles, which you always check that when you're on site. Make sure the handles are tight. Uh, however, just to point out, I believe this literally does, uh, you could take this lock apart by unscrewing this and lifting it out, but it won't come out with that cylinder in the way. So no matter what, you you do have to uh, pick the cylinder. And let's just see which way it goes. It's that way, so we need to pick it that way move all this down so that I can grab my easiest to grab picks. Oh I, just, oh, I just lost my screwdriver. Come back. I'm parked on a hill so everything's going to roll kind of down. Uh, uh, well, we got two chances, two cylinders to try. So I'll go ahead and lubricate both of them. Uh, we have a dang dude. Oh, no, here. How about a, how about a hook? How about, how about there's a dang dude if we need it. Now we need a yeah, tension wrench. Which way do we gotta go? We gotta go, we gotta go to the right. Zero cylinder in here. Mm, mm, mm. Not what I really wanted to be doing. We still working? I gotta watch the camera. Let's just give it a go. Before we just drill it out it's only four pins so maybe we'll get lucky shouldn't be any security pins in there either I don't think there is typically on paracentric keyways like this I have to oh I prefer the half diamond I can do some some damage on a para with a half diamond uh, and actually my pit kit is right there but I'm just going to keep trying this for a minute never know just rake it a few times we're getting anything getting anything not really Dang, dude. Okay, we'll try it the other way then. Try for try for that for a minute and then go to the other side. Oh no no. Um hmm. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, I wonder if this cylinder will pull. No, it won't. I was wondering if it would. Yep, there we go. Hey, Jason. Yay, Jason. 
Alright, so I think we're going to have to actually turn all the way around, which means we're probably going to have to lift the pins as well. Maybe, maybe. Let's go this way. Let's turn it a little bit more. Because if it's, if it's like that, and we just turn it, that should actually be... Sometimes you can feel. No, so it must be the other way, which turn it. Uh, and if we turn the new keys all the way around, we can see if we go all the way around to, to right there, which is really close, it should line up since it's not coming out this way. But we do have to be aware All the way around, so we're gonna push it back in. Let's go ahead and ah, we may have to spin this. Oh, shoot! Nope, nope, we're not gonna have to. Okay, so we're caught up in the in the top pins, just drop down. No big deal there. We're just gonna slide this in. Lift them up, boom! Ooh, that was spring loaded. And uh, once again, just turn it. We should go all the way back to the beginning. All the way back, somewhere in this range. Right there. Shoot, just barely. And uh, there we go. Get that guy out. And while we have it out, let's go ahead and soak the inside. Yep, yep. Let's go ahead and get get that coated real well. And uh, and the bolts as well too, especially that one. Yep, you're good. Yep, you're good. Y'all are all good. Okay, we're all good. Boom, back down and uh, back on the gate. Boom, back in. Boom, are you gonna boom back in for me? You don't wanna go that way, huh? Why don't you wanna go that way? Being stubborn. Being stubborn because of that. Ah. <laughs> yeah, everything's a little bit off, looks like. There we go. Hey. There we go. Alright, now try it. Two. Now this is an old version. The new versions of these things have an adjustable screw in the middle of the bolt and you can adjust the screw. You can adjust the length of this. So this is definitely one of the older guys, especially since it says Vera. They started branding their stuff all lock and knox with their own cylinders quite a while ago. I want to say over 12 years ago. Because this company has been around for a while. Made in Belgium. So, again, a really nice uh, set, and, and again, we're going to just double check. Those screws look really tight, so no big deal. We'll just double check them while we're here. Uh, and what was it? The three millimeter? Indeed. Crank down. Yep, you're good. Yep, you're good. All right, let's go put it back on the gate. Okay, so we're just gonna carefully angle it like this and then wiggle it back into position. Okay, we got him, we got him, and come on, 
you can do it. There we go. All right, put our bolts back in. Don't forget your spacers. Tighten the rest of the way down while you're supporting. Like hold this kind of close, tight, and then tighten those bolts. I need to adjust it a little bit. I'm gonna kind of hold it with my hand here, just like this. Push it, push it as I'm tightening those bolts to make sure it seats on the fence correctly. Much easier to do with two hands. Okay, tight, tight. Try it. Should work just like before. Try your key. Like that works. open. Oh, well, looks like this. That is, so I always check your strike and you can see how it's, how it's adjustable. So you would mount this and then tighten this down. Whew, look at the wear on that guy. So anyway, that's how that part works.